The Torres Strait stretches 150 kilometres from the tip of Cape York Peninsula in North Queensland to the southwest coast of Papua New Guinea. Islands, reefs, coral and sand caves are scattered throughout the region, the northernmost island reaching to within 5 kilometres of the Papua New Guinea coastline. The region includes 18 island and two mainland communities in the northern peninsular area. Being island communities, much of the activity in the Torres Strait is water-based and includes commercial fishing and traditional hunting. Furthermore, travel between islands is undertaken in open dinghies for social, education, health and cultural activities. The Torres Strait is a complex area to navigate safely. In addition to many reefs, islands and rocks, the waters are subject to significant tidal flows, steady, strong winds and choppy seas. These conditions, combined with a relatively low socio-economic setting, often create situations where open water crossings are being made in small and unsuitable boats. The 2012-13 Torres Strait Marine Safety Program, or TSMSP, has been delivered in accordance with recommendations of an internal review and guidance from partner agency steering committee meetings. The original partnership between Australian Maritime Safety Authority Maritime Safety Queensland, Torres Strait Regional Authority, Queensland Police Service and the National Maritime Safety Authority of Papua New Guinea has additional support through education partner TAFE and training and employment provider CEA. Studies originally showing the Torres Strait region as a hotspot for search and rescue and marine incidents have since revealed that the TSMSP has made a significant impact on the maritime safety culture in target areas and this improvement in an area which had been previously lacking has resulted in a considerable decrease in maritime fatalities and serious marine incidents in the region. These outcomes can be attributed in the most part to the effective management and delivery of maritime training combined with targeted marketing and education programs. Seafarers have been further advantaged through the distribution of heavily subsidised safety equipment Additional training units have also been incorporated to ensure industry compliance with trainees progressing through their traditional Islander boat or TIB coxswains, which has been developed in line with the TSMSP training plan. Units covered include the Torres Strait Boat Safe Course, elements of shipboard safety, marine radio operation, outboard motor maintenance and coastal navigation supplemented by the EPIRB exchange program, the safety grab bag scheme, attempts to make use of new technologies, social media and the provision of multi-agency support have been key factors in the success of the TSMSP. With completions for remaining island clusters close at hand, the marine safety program will have provided coverage to Thursday, Hammond and Horn Islands, Badu, Moa and Mobiag Islands, Saibai, Dewan and Boigu Islands, Warriba, Yam and York Islands, and finally the Eastern Island Cluster of Murray, Darnley and Stephen Islands. Training units have also been conducted in the Northern Peninsula area and in Cairns as part of the Defence Indigenous Development Program. These outcomes are now well recognised by most stakeholders, particularly Outer Island community members, and the TSMSP is seen as a very proactive response by governments to a problem that is directly or indirectly affecting most Torres Strait Island people. A genuine momentum surrounds the TSMSP and this is apparent through anecdotal evidence as well as hard data surrounding incidents in the region and the program aims to further capitalise on this as a delivery strategy and target audience evolves. 21 days I've been there so me, my boy, and a small boy up on top. But it is cause but we can we're not here for fun, but this is a serious thing. You know, I've been crying there, so we everybody cried. We need to a lifelong blood. Because we didn't have safety thing on board. If we didn't have safety thing, we'd be here the next day. For the same afternoon. We in the house. But we know we got that's why we flopped it. We need to make it a course. Enough of fun. You don't joke about it. 
Because when that thing happen for you, you suffer. You, you know it's scary. You got all safety equipment for you ready in you. Then of course that we do and yeah, safety one end. Safety first thing. Huh? I can secure. Dinghy, you must have a water, gipper, life jacket, paddle, torch, um, good anchors, spare, spare rope. This is mine, but if my anyway, if I go down there, must for carnival, zero, warfare. First thing you do, check your dinghy. You get everything inside. But the main thing, you you know, we got the hip-up. You forget the hip yeah. If you know the hip it's broken. You struggle like life struggle. You struggle for lifelong struggle. All the way back. Put our mind to a note. We know you have fun or spend a time or work. This is for real. It's our own betterness for you. That's all. Okay, remember the clock? Clock is north. What's north on the clock? And if they haven't got enough water, well, you can tell them. Stuck under. No. Yeah, that's it. I'll drop your anchor and wait for the boat to come in. Eight meters. Right, eh? So all of the depth on this chart are in meters. So if it's eight and it's got to be the depth there. Zero point seven. Zero point seven. Over that chart now and you can look at the spot depth and it's in meters. Zero point six. What is zero point six? Six hundred mil, isn't it? It's not a meter, it's six hundred mil. So if we then go to this and say our spot depth on the chart is saying one point 1.2. Any tide that you've got, whether it be a low or a high, has to be added on to this, doesn't it? Everybody good? Doesn't make any sense whatsoever, so you've got to be either 9 degrees or 10 degrees in this case here. Okay, so. So, what's the way I get for that? Well, what we call prominent points. So tell me two prominent points here around your area that you use to navigate. Mole We basically use those, everybody uses those for this inshore and coastal navigation. Um, they're doing the TIP coxswain course. Navigation. Uh, they're really now. Wet points and position, they should be almost done. After this, we got towing. We want to be. We got a big ears print. These are for like red paint. Oh, that's not overboard. And then now, they will just cut. They will just cut. It works off the red paint. Danger. 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 This will be pretty busy for us and I need, what we're going to do is we're going to break up into two groups of four, so just while we're talking, sort of get yourself sort of organised, I guess, into those groups of four. What we're 
looking to do over the next two days is pretty much work from the bottom to the top of the outboard and understand, I guess, the principles of how it works. So it's important that you understand how something works. Once you understand how it works, you then got some appreciation as to how to maintain it. So Everything that we do, we like to do in a procedure, making sure that you know what the end product's all about. As you remove those bits and pieces, then go to the step of lining them up methodically in rows so that when you come to put them back together, it's exactly the, the process in reverse to be able to then create the end result so that you don't end up with parts missing. You've got the prop in one hand, you've also then got the output shaft across onto the ceiling system, which then, you know, I guess, separates the gearbox to the outside environment. So we're going to have a look at all that, inspect it. Well, this one here, the cooling system is one of the critical things that we talk about in terms of making sure it's operating correctly and understanding and maintenance wise for the health of for the long running of the actual engine. <laughs> Clean all your bolts up. Joel. Make sure they've got no grease left on them. <laughs> this is the drive shaft, which is virtually, you can imagine the motor's sitting, or the engine's sitting up here, and it's now rotating on its flywheel. That's a spline that comes in, so you've got a spline over the top of that. If you're going to start this engine with this removed and only the flywheel, you need to make sure that you are in neutral, don't you? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.